Zan's surgery did take, I think, approximately 13 hours. And I remember specifically during the vertebral removal that uh, we were alerted that all the spinal cord data to his legs had gone away, which means basically at that point he's paralyzed. Overcoming a spinal deformity. In this video today, we're going to react to that. What's up everyone? My name is Dr. Antonio Webb. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. A few years ago, there was a video put out about a gentleman with a very severe spinal deformity. And in this video, we're going to be reacting to it. Let's jump right into it. I, I never really thought like I was like different than other kids, but around when I was five, my parents, they could see that like something wasn't right. As I was getting older, it just kept getting worse. Just looking at his clinical photos, this is a very severe spinal deformity. He has deformities in every single plane and kind of the sagittal plane where we're looking at it from the side. He has it in the coronal plane where you're looking at it from the front to the back. And he also has a significant what's called kyphosis, which is bending over, of, over your, on your spine. Um, a lot of older people get this as they age, their body and their bones get really soft and brittle, and then they just kyphose over. And that's why you see a lot of older people just walking over kind of hunchback. And this is essentially what this is, but this is due to his spinal deformity. My name is John Sarcona, and my spine was almost in the shape of a C. I met John in 2016. His case was one of the most challenging that I've ever had to take care of. John unfortunately had a, what's called an early onset uh, kyphoscoliosis. So you have both a kyphosis, and that's kind of a hunchback deformity, and um, scoliosis, you know, lateral curvature of the spine. But he also had over a dozen surgeries. Dr. Linky, freaking legend in the field of uh, spine surgery. There's even instruments named after this guy. Uh, he's still operating and still seeing patients. And I had actually a chance to meet him just to chat it up and um, um, you know say hello to him at a spine meeting a few years ago. But um, yeah, a freaking legend in the field of spine surgery, very well known. And for Dr. Linky to say this is actually one of his most challenging cases, that, that says a lot about this gentleman's uh, spinal deformity. I tried everything to heal John, to get this disease away from him. It was hard for the fact that he loved sports. As he was getting older, not fitting in was really starting to take a toll on him. John started surgery back in 2007. We had surgeries around every six months. And in 2015, the doctor said, can't do it no more. I received a call from his treating surgeon, and he said that he'd like me to see him fairly quickly. Yeah, so it gets to a point where some surgeons, you know, it's out of their comfort zone, or they just don't have the skill set to actually take care of uh, very severe problems in their practice. And I, I commonly do that as well. If a patient has a very severe problem, I'll send them to someone who does that all the time and is better equipped in their his or her, her, her hands. So uh, not very common for this to happen. His oxygen levels were going down. His immune system was shutting down. He was bending by the hour. Basically he's being crushed to death, suffocated. So if your scoliosis curvature gets to a certain point, it can certainly affect your lung function. That's why we treat patients with scoliosis if their curvature gets to a certain point. Just because if the curvature gets to a certain point, especially in your thoracic spine, there's only so much room for the lungs. Once the lung function starts to decline, then that's not really good. Patients can't breathe, their, their heart can't perfuse, can lead to a lot of other problems. So usually the curvature and the scoliosis gets to 45, 40 degrees, sometimes a little bit lower than that, then we talk about surgery. So when I met John, his spine was collapsing, his chin was heading towards his chest and his whole upper spine was collapsing onto his heart and lung. That's called a chin to chest deformity. Very severe deformity where your chin, right here, is touching your chest. So this is a, a 3D printed model of John's actual spine when we first saw him. What's most striking about this basically is from the side you can see he has a very severe angled kyphosis. As you can see as this kyphosis keeps bending it basically squishes and squeezes in the heart and lungs which sits in this interval right here. 
And I knew right away that he needed surgery, but he wasn't healthy enough. We began his road toward surgery, placing a halo around his skull and putting a traction weight that we could slowly stretch out his kyphosis uh, um, to uh, relieve some of the pressure on the spinal cord to improve the space available for his breathing in his lungs. I instantly was breathing better, my throat felt better, like because my neck was getting long. So this is a halo device that uh, most, a lot of deformity surgeons will actually use. Essentially, it is these pins that go into your skull, and then you hang weight or traction to kind of slowly stretch it over time. And you essentially add more weight, let's say weekly or daily, to that. So over time, you loosen up all the ligaments and muscles and hopefully the spine. You can get actually a good amount of correction just from the halo traction. And then sometimes they'll do this for a few weeks, a week or two, and then do their definitive surgery. So a lot of these patients are in the hospital, let's say three, four, five, six weeks sometimes. Longer, And my parents would see and they'd be like, like, wow, John, like your neck is so long. This is, this is crazy. Well, we were in the hospital for like a month of halo traction. John, either uh, the VCR type of surgery, vertebral column resection, Think about it, if basically this is one section of the spine, this is another section. If we take two or three vertebrae out at the center here, separate the spine into two different sections, and then basically we can kind of bring the spine together and shorten it uh, to correct the deformity. And the thing that makes it very tricky is that the spinal cord runs down the center of this, so we have to do this very carefully. VCR, vertebral column resection, very high risk type surgery. It's almost a 100% complication rate where there's something's gonna go wrong, whether that's patient has a bleed after surgery, some type of spinal cord injury, nerve injury, um, you know, the bone doesn't fuse together or the screws pull out. 100% um, complication rate, very high risk surgery. I've actually done one of these surgeries in fellowship and uh, these surgeries take a long time because essentially you have to remove that whole portion or that block of bone from the spine without injuring the spinal cord or nerves, which is very high risk. John's surgery did take, I think, approximately 13 hours. And I remember specifically during the vertebral removal that uh, we were alerted that all the spinal cord data to his legs had gone away, which means basically at that point he's paralyzed. Fortunately, I, I've experienced that before. You know, one of the treatments for this is to com complete the vertebral removal very, very carefully, obviously. What that does is take all the pressure off the spinal cord. Yeah, so in surgery we have what's called neural monitoring or interoperative monitoring, which is essentially uh, a technician that is in surgery with us they hook the patient up to all these wires and leads and they monitor their nerves. So if there's any dysfunction or something that goes wrong in surgery, that technician will tell me that, hey, the, this patient's nerve on the right side, um, I'm seeing some activity or there, I don't see any activity, which can be a bad sign. So th this is essential in this type of surgery to have someone who's looking over the nerve function, the spinal cord function, and those, there's also a neurologist that for all of my surgeries that I do, there's a neurologist who's reading from a re remote site and this neurologist will look for any abnormal activity or anything that's going wrong in surgery with the spinal cord or nerves. After we did that, actually the spinal cord data started coming back. So then he woke up with normal, normal function to his legs. Waking up from the surgery, some of the nurses were even so shocked to see like my progress, like actually, like my balance was like, Good. like it felt new. Like I, like moving my legs and stuff, like everything felt new. It was crazy. I like this dude. He got some J's on, some Jordans. Uh, I actually, I have those shoes there. Uh, so, I mean, he, this is uh, awesome to see that he's uh, getting a good recovery from this surgery here. It's like walking in a new body. And I, I felt like I had actually ruined the breathe. It's been two years now with no surgeries. There's not even a word that I can find at the moment to describe what I see when John went to the prom, graduated high school. That beautiful golf swing. Play basketball, walk, breathe. Everything is falling into place. 
Good Hi, to see you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm just so, so honored and, and privileged to take care of someone like John, to take care of his, uh, of his family, to gain their trust, and, um, and really to help them lead a, a more normal life. Show me a better profession than that. I agree. One of the best villains in the world when a patient comes to you after surgery and is in tears because you've done something to help them. And I've had this just last week, a patient after a cervical surgery, she came back and was just like, Dr. Webb, you changed my life. Can I give you a hug? Um, she was in tears and that's a great feeling. It just makes you uh, very grateful and um, all the years of hard work, sacrifice, the work that you put in to get to this point, it makes that all much more worthwhile. Before the surgery, just walking to the golf course was its own struggle. Now, my golf swing is definitely a lot better. I guess I'm like most excited about like moving on and like not having to constantly think of, oh, well, maybe in a couple months now, I'm gonna have that scheduled surgery again. When I went to the tailor to get fitted for my tux for the prom, it was like, 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 wow, is that really me, you know, <laughs> looking in the mirror, like, it felt good, you know. Awesome story, awesome outcome. Uh, you know, th these are very complex surgeries that are done by surgeons that are skilled and trained in doing them. Um, in my training, I, I did a, quite a bit of deformity surgery. I don't do a lot of it in practice, but I do assist my senior partners who do a lot of these cases that are very complex. This is a, uh, a scoliosis that we did just two weeks ago. Uh, very severe deformity here. You can see it spinning around. This is a 3D kind of model of the CAT scan of the spine. And we were able to put some screws and rods and correct this gentleman's scoliosis. So similar, not as severe surgery as John's, but uh, very severe and uh, advanced scoliosis that we did. But I hope this video helps you guys. Um, this is a really good outcome from this particular surgery and it's, you know, it's life changing. This is the reason why I love spine surgery. Hope you guys learned something. Make sure you subscribe. Put it in the comments below. What do you guys think about his uh, condition and what questions do you have for me? We'll see you next time.